What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news, join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumours you need to know, including rumours on additional Mania matches, AJ Lee return update, Booker T's BS, Rikishi picks this oos to win at WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes WrestleMania surprise, the real reason why Undertaker vs Sting never happened, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. Now let's hit the intro and get straight into our first story. Now first story looks on rumours on additional Mania matches. On top of today's news is a rumour from WrestleVotes about the final lineup for WrestleMania. The indication from sources suggests we'll see up to four more WrestleMania matches announced for the event. As of now, the working plan is to feature seven matches per night on the main card. Seven matches for each night seems to fit in with Triple H's habit of booking five matches on regular PLEs and up to six to seven on big four events, although the Rumble only had four bouts. It's unknown whether the game intends to continue the WWE's recent policy of booking matches on SmackDown that couldn't fit into WrestleMania due to time constraints. It also remains to be seen whether there'll be any matches on the WWE's pre-show. What last-minute matches do you think WWE will book for the event? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, AJ Lee return update. Is AJ Lee returning to WWE? The WWE Universe seems welcome to the idea based on fan chatter on social media and CM Punk's WWE return has made AJ the source of serious speculation. In an exclusive report from SE Scoops, Aaron Farble noted, There's been talk circulating that AJ Lee might return to WWE following CM Punk's comeback, with discussions reportedly initiated through Punk prior to the Royal Rumble, but ultimately they didn't materialise. Despite ongoing efforts from WWE, AJ Lee reportedly desires a memorable return rather than a one-time appearance. At one point, some WWE fans thought AJ might make a surprise appearance at the 2024 Rumble. That didn't happen and the idea that Lee was interested in an extended return, perhaps like Trish Stratus returned last year, seemed to make sense. And Farble tweeted, There's a new story about AJ Lee's WWE return going around, so I have a new answer, but it's one you probably don't want to hear. I'm told that there have been no talks with or about AJ Lee making a WWE return. I'm told that she's very well liked and respected, just not a topic at the moment. Do you think AJ Lee will ever return to wrestling? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Trish Stratus defends green WWE star. I add Trish Stratus to the list of WWE stars who are defending Maxine Dupree's in-ring work as she continues her journey of becoming a WWE star. Dupree has been booed at events and the subject of online criticism from people who feel like her work isn't at a main roster level. During an interview with Slam Wrestling, Stratus shared her thoughts on Dupree's situation. I think Maxine is doing amazing. I think she's being booked perfectly. I see similar parallels to the way I was booked early on. I believe I have this connection with the fans because of how I came up. I didn't do the traditional upbringing. I didn't come in trained. I didn't do the indies or the minor leagues, so to speak. I literally learned on the road. I learned as I went and everyone was along for the journey. They got to see me fall down, but they also got to see me stand up, dust myself off and try again. And I think she's doing a great job. While it may be hard to believe Trish Stratus' early work as a wrestler was borderline awful, she busted her back to improve, eventually becoming the WWE's top female performer. As far as Stratus is concerned, Dupree has a lot going for her, with Trish noting Dupree is athletic, she's got a great look, and she's gorgeous. Trish added that Dupree should use the negativity to motivate herself into becoming the wrestler she wants to be. As for Dupree's critics, Stratus didn't hold back. I think these keyboard warriors have no idea what we do. I suffered it too. They were like, oh, that match was crap. Well, you try it. I love that the women banded together because we all get it. We all go through it. We live it. And it affects us, you know? We have feelings. So when people say something mean, it doesn't feel that great. Stratus said that she's glad that she and her fellow wrestlers can band together on social media. While some people seem to be trolling Dupree and criticizing her for no other reason than to be hurtful, what are fans who feel she shouldn't be wrestling on the main roster yet due to her lack of fundamentals? Do fans have say in the product WWE puts out? Well, Stratus' invitation for fans to step into the ring rings hollow when fans are paying customers who expect a certain level of quality. Fans complaining about a wrestling product are no different than people who complain about a bad meal at a restaurant or a bad movie they paid to see. The customer doesn't have to be a chef or a movie director to know that something is bad. It's all about how the consumer goes about voicing their dissatisfaction. Next up, Booker T's BS. 
Was Booker T embellishing the facts when he claimed on his podcast that he and CM Punk had some sort of altercation when Punk visited NXT during the 12th March taping? There were doubts from the get-go as Punk had reportedly been on his best behaviour since returning to WWE at Survivor Series, and now Booker is actually admitting that the story was completely fabricated. The two-time WWE Hall of Famer revealed in his Hall of Fame podcast, I'm trying to entertain my fans because that story, that 40-second story that people wrote, it was clickbait, guys. Did I put it out there? Did I say it? As far as I had a beef, I was going to run up? Yeah, I said it, but I'm entertaining you guys. Entertaining, just playing around. Our wrestling fans have come to expect such nonsense from certain podcasters, with Booker seeming to be one of the worst culprits who likes to stir the pot with an apparent goal of getting more viewers. Unfortunately, not all listeners are savvy to podcasters with a penchant for promoting fake news. With all that's been going on with CM Punk's behaviour recently, it was a poor decision to put such a story out. What do you think of Booker's BS though? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Rikishi picks this ooze to win at WrestleMania. Now, how does Rikishi feel about his sons Jay and Jimmy battling each other at WrestleMania 40? While the Hall of Famer discussed things on his Rikishi Fatu Off The Top Rope podcast saying, Man, that's exciting news. I'm excited to be able to have the boys out there. Another historic bloodline family tree, whatever you want to call it. But to have my sons out there on WrestleMania finally going after it together, this is a big deal for the whole fans. You're finally going to see the dream match. Uso versus Uso, Yeet versus No Yeet. It's going to be exciting. I'm very happy to be the last to know about it. One of the questions that often comes up with the bloodline is whether Rikishi will appear in some capacity. Rikishi has hinted at appearing before and he's doing so again. I'm not too far from WrestleCon. I'll be there at WrestleCon. I'll be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm not too far, that's all I can say. I'm not too far from the stadium. I'm not too far from the stadium where WrestleMania will be. Whether or not Rikishi shows up is something fans will likely have to wait until WrestleMania, but for the man who did it for The Rock, he knows who should go over for the win. Jey Uso. Jay and Jimmy's dad acknowledge both men have had great careers, but the right business move would be to put main event Jay over. Regardless, Rikishi said the match is a win-win situation. To see my sons going against each other for this dream match for the fans, it's a win situation for the fans, for the company, for the family, and I'm so proud of them. Jay and Jimmy are sure to put on a great match, but they'll have lots of competition for the best match honors at WrestleMania, as there are some huge matches booked for the event. Next up is spoilers, Cody Rhodes' WrestleMania surprise. Now it's time for a possible spoiler on Cody Rhodes' entrance at WrestleMania 40 for when he wrestles Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship. Skip to the next story if you don't want us to spoil the surprise. Now according to Downstreet Zach Call, the band's lead singer, there may be a live performance of Cody's entrance, Kingdom. Hall spoke with Wrestling News' Steve Fall about his and his band's involvement with Cody's entrance theme. Steve asked Zach whether he plans to be at WrestleMania 40. So we're going to leave that at an announcement on 5th April 2024 and all of our teasers. We'll have to wait and see what's going on there. I can tell you this, I will be in Philadelphia WrestleMania weekend. All followed up by asking Cole whether he'll be at Mania as a fan or a performer with the singer responding, I'm always a fan. Paul also praised Cody for helping the band during the American Nightmares negotiations to return to WWE. According to the band's frontman, Cody told WWE officials his theme was coming with him to the WWE or he wasn't going to make the jump. This was a big boost for the band's reputation as well as their pocketbook. And finally, the real reason why Undertaker vs Sting never happened. Last but not least, The Undertaker has been revealing some more behind the scenes stories thanks to his One Dead Man show as well as his Six Feet Under with Mark Calloway series on YouTube. Now the phenom is revealing why fans never got to see him battle Sting in WWE. It just didn't work out. He had a short run in WWE and Vince didn't want it. For whatever reason, I don't know what it was, he didn't feel it. Everybody else was clamoring for this match for quite a few years. Taker shared his opinion on how the match would have played out. The match would have been good, but I don't think it would have lived up to the expectations that people have for it. People always think about things in a certain sense. I think they thought in their mind of Undertaker 2007 or 2008 versus Sting. It was later on than that. I can say I was way on the backside of what I was going to do when he got there. Taker praised how Sting was booked in AEW and that Sting and the promotion used him wisely and protected him with the matches and opponents he faced. Do you think Taker vs Sting could have been a classic? Let us know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.